How are you all doing folks and welcome back to Alcomoto's Garage Series and today we are going to finally do the neutral light switch on the 48 which has finally failed. It's been failing for a while, been struggling to find neutral for a good few weeks and then the other week on the last ride finally gave up the ghost. First we're going to test it and show you how to test it to make sure you know whether it is a switch that's failed or it's a wiring fault or it's on the idiot lights on your dashboard. Um, and then how to go and remove the pulleys and everything to get at the switch and change it. Quite a simple job, but we'll show you what tools you need to do that job. Okay, it's been a cold week here in the UK, been probably down to minus 18 plus up the north of Scotland. Here it's been about minus 5, minus 6 all week. Uh, today's a little bit milder, down to about 2 degrees, but still bloody cold with ice on the ground outside, so there's been no riding. Heaters on in the garage, we're going to comfortably get it up to about 75 degrees to get it nice and toasty for working in here. And uh, But for now, let's get cracking, show you the switch you need to buy, the part number and the tools you're going to need to do the job. So, let's bring you closer. Okay, so I actually ordered this switch from Royal Mail uh, 48, which is a 48 hour service. It's took well over a week to arrive because Royal Mail are actually on strike here in the UK which has been a little bit of a pain for receiving parts here on order, unless it's through courier. So this is a little switch you need. Okay, and that is your part number. Okay, the neutral indicator switch. And just because I can do, time for a little bit of a whiskey. Always keeps you warm on a cold night, especially when you're working in the garage. Okay, so uh, as I've got on here, I've got the uh, mounts for the rear uh, passenger pegs, they're going to come off because uh, my good lady, I don't think she'll be on the back of the Sportster anymore. So while I'm at it, I'm going to remove these. We've already loosened some of these off just to quicken up the process. Uh, if I find the right keys. Now our Torx will actually fit in these as well. Uh, so we are actually using there a T40. That will actually get those hex keys bolts off. But if you want to use the correct key, it will actually be metric and not as imperial, which I've got my imperial ones out here as well. So you don't really have to remove this, but you will have to remove the brake rod. As you can see, that's the brass one that I made a couple of years back. Uh, you may be able to slide it away from that without removing this assembly but for me I'm just doing it so that I can remove this and get this out of the way as I said I don't need this anymore and I'll need the bigger key for that Okay, so we can just leave that down at the bottom there. Okay, so like I said, we've already loosened off some of these bolts. So with the cover off, you see on here where I've had a little bit of uh, rub through over the, the years, not too excessive. So that is the bastard pulley we've got to remove. Uh, these are going to be bastard tight because they have not been off before. Okay. And you can just hear that click then from the Loctite which has been onto these. Now I must stress, do not use cheap tools when you're doing this job. Pay for some decent tools. 
I'm only using a uh, sort of, this is my breakdown kit that I take with me on the bike. Uh, I use a metric and I've got the Imperial set of this. It's made by Snap-on. I would normally use a socket. Again, that one would drive into there. So if you want to buy the sockets again, I don't use anything but Snap-on, but that's just me. There is uh, some good tool companies out there that will do just as good a job. But please do make sure, otherwise what you'll do is you'll round off the inside of these bolts and you will have a pain in the ass job to get them out. And there's a socket that's gonna drive it off. Now this is one inch and seven eighths. You can actually use a 48 mil metric equivalent the inch and seven eighths we're using is a three quarter drive. What we want to do is put the bike in gear. Yeah, putting the bike in gear, what that'll do is it'll just, you need to do that or else you'll just be fighting against the bike. You're trying to pull the bike forward once you've got your uh, yeah, ratchet on there or bar or whatever you're going to try and use to remove the uh, hub nut. What I'm going to use is called a swench and it's this big beast here on the floor. Get decent light in here so this thing here I've had for a lot of the quarrying industry that I've worked on over the years and this thing will remove anything this is the absolute beast it's a manual impact wrench and I have got uh, my snap-on uh, air guns as well and I've got my battery powered 18 volt guns by snap-on but it's more fun to remove it with the swench it's the beast so what we're going to do now is we put the bike into gear we've left the belt on with tension we can always release that off to get the pulley off afterwards uh, but the main thing is let's get this thing off first and get that switch changed okay so just through the front camera shot now you'll see the wedge i've put over the pulley and between the belt now i've got a block of wood under the rear tire the bike is in high gear and what i'm using is a camshaft locking tool so you can buy these from most motor stores for a twin cam engine and that usually goes between the two pop top pulleys on the cam belt on a car. But it slides over the teeth on the pulley beautifully and locks up the belt. And that should give me enough support then to use the beast and lock the pulley enough to move it. Okay, so we'll go ahead. Just make sure everything's secure on the centre stand. This thing weighs a ton. You can see that's locking on the locking tab now. And then you can hear the clicks of the manual impact wrench, which is doing its job. And there you go. That is the pulling up loose. As easy as that, folks. That thing never fails. Okay, so now the hard bit's been done. The rest should be absolutely easy. So we've got a little bit of slack on that belt. What we'll do is we'll put the bike on the jack and readjust the rear wheel once we've done the switch. But for now, we'll just move that out of the way. We don't need that. And the pulley comes off nice and easy. So once it's off, just inspect the splines on the pulley, make sure everything's okay. Nothing untoward there and in bloody good condition. Uh, but obviously now we've got that off, we can see and get at the neutral switch. So let's pull off the wire, which is here. A little bit fiddly. Okay, and then there's a switch just at the side there. So well, I'll get a socket now to remove that. Okay, so you will need a fairly thin walled socket for this as it is a bit of a pain to get into. Now it is actually five eighths if you're working in Imperial. Otherwise metric 16 mil socket is actually a good fit. I can actually see the ball sticking or it was sticking 
on the switch there. So with a bit of spray that's probably repairable. Now, a lot of people do say to get a better connection on the switch to omit or leave out the washer. But with it being a new switch, we're not going to do that. Actually, you can tell the difference on the spring tension on the new switch compared to the old one, which has gone weak. So I would say it probably has had its day. It actually does feel a lot weaker, although you can hear that switching. And in with the new switch. Okay, there probably is a torque setting in the HD manual for this. But as the golden rule is, I'm using a half inch ratchet here. Uh, yes, this isn't snap on by the way. Uh, just do it so it's tight. The way I always do it, I always just grip the bottom of the ratchet on top. So you can't do it anymore when it's hand tight. And then just a little nip forward, quarter of a turn. And that, folks, is enough. That's all you need. So on with on with the connector and we connect these two back up here okay so if you can see at the bottom of the pulley there we've just used the locking tool again which is the blue thing here we put the bike in a high gear and i've got a block of wood behind the rear wheel it's quite awkward to hold this especially with the extension on but you'll hear this click in a minute there you go and that has torqued up that pulley there you go so we will see if the locking tab now can line up that's absolutely perfect so the two holes now where the locking tab goes will get that in and I know that is not going to move in a million years. Okay, so that's everything put back together. We've uh, took off the pillion mount on there, put that back so that's nice and neat. Okay, so we've uh, removed the rear pillion mounts. That's ready to go back on nice and clean. Everything's back together there, lock tightened up. We'll leave that down for a minute while we put the cover on. And again, just a little drop of Loctite on each of these. And then put the clip back on that, and that's it. So we'll test the neutral light, guys. Ignition on, tell me side stands down. Kick up. And there we go, there is our neutral light. there you go folks neutral light finally fixed on my bike so if you've got the neutral light problem on your bike i hope this helps uh, to fix your problem as well so as i say the switch in the uk is around 20 pounds 22 pounds it's not too bad uh quite an easy job to do but you do need the right tools if you've not got the big manual impact wrench that i've got then please just use the correct socket the engine 7 8 or 48 millimeter in metric Try and use a three-quarter drive if you can. It's going to make the job a lot easier. And the locking tool I use to lock the gears is going to make the job so much easier than without, trust me. So just one last thing. We have got an epic adventure hopefully coming soon. Just an overnight. We might do a little bit of winter camping just to bring you some riding. I must be mad. Uh, so stay tuned to the channel and we'll have something coming here soon between now and the new year because it is Christmas coming up. Uh, but until then, folks, if you've not subscribed to Alamo, so please hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, and please do leave a comment. Uh, but until the next time, I'm signing out. We'll see you later, folks.